Hello guys, I'm hoping you all are having a great day from wherever it is you're watching from. Out uh, here, it's not that sunny. It's kind of cloudy, but the clouds will clear, I'm hoping. Uh, towards midday, that is. Now on to the topic of the day. President Uhuru Kenyatta is holding a crisis meeting with Azimio elected leaders at the KICC. Now before we proceed, I would just like to urge you just hit the subscribe button or if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube and search for David Ofula. You'll be getting more of this kind of content. It's what I cover basically. So why is President Uru holding this crisis meeting today at the KICC? I can think of only three reasons. The first reason is to congratulate the Azimio candidates who have won. For example, uh, Governor Orengo. He has stepped up from being senator. The second reason that the president would be holding this meeting, in my opinion, is to get ahead of the announcement that the deputy president, William Samoy Ruto, is in fact president-elect. It's only a matter of time before Afula Chibukati confirms this. Now, I saw data from Standard Media. They've already compiled their done. William Ruto is at 50 point something percent. At the time of doing this video, I'm not too sure of the numbers but you should be seeing it on your screen. I'll pin it over there. So it's quite clear that William Ruto has won and the president is getting ahead of all this information. The president, in my opinion, is also going to concede defeat on behalf of Raila Odinga. And if he does not do it, I personally believe it is his role to do that. And why would I say this? Why is it that the president, in my opinion, should be the one to concede on behalf of Raila Odinga. Here's the reasons why. Number one, the president is the chairman of Azimio. He's the leader of that entire Azimio group. It is not Raila Odinga. It is the president, who is also the chairman of Jubilee Party. The second reason why the burden of concession, in my opinion, sits on the president. He did not deliver Mount Kenya votes. He did not deliver. With the weight of a sitting president, I would have expected that Raila Odinga would have clinched at least 35% of Mount Kenya votes, which would have been enough to get him over the finish line. All right? Now, apologies, Kidogo. There's a bunch of birds out here. God's doing, what can you do? <laughs> They're all his creatures. So, um... I believe the delivery of Mount Kenya votes rested on the president's shoulders and he ought to have delivered. He did not. Neither could Martha Karua. The third reason why I believe the burden of concession rests on the president's shoulders is that he single-handedly frustrated and prevented Raila Odinga from picking a running mate who numerically could have delivered the presidency. Martha Karua could not even deliver victory in the polling station that she voted from. William Ruto won in that polling station. And as she was voting, everyone was on the line looking at her. You know, sometimes when you're going to vote as a leader, your arrival there, even during that day of voting, can sway voters. You don't even have to campaign. Just you being there can tilt the votes. And it's clear, the little that Karua got, perhaps it's because of that effect, but William Ruto carried the day in the very polling station that Martha Karua voted at. So in my opinion, Raila should have been given a free range. He should have been able to pick Kalonzo or even Mudavadi prior to Mudavadi uh, joining Kenya Kwanza. And he'd have had an easier time garnering more votes. Because what's the point of picking someone who's going to deliver nothing and relinquishing somebody who can give you everything? Look at Ukambani, William Ruto is picking more than 20% of the votes. He should not have been getting those numbers had Kalonzo been the running mate. William Ruto would be getting 3-4%. So the excitement was not there in Ukambani because of the picking of Martha Karua as running mate. The fourth reason why I believe the president is feeling the need to take charge and address people at the KICC and get ahead of whatever it is Ofula Chibukati is going to announce, is that the sitting president took all the bargaining chips from Raila Odinga simply because he had a stake in the government. I have witnessed the president say that guys like C.S. Munya will continue to stay in power if Raila wins, and so on and so forth. 
So that really takes bargaining chips from Rayla. <clears throat> so that really takes bargaining chips from Rayla Odinga. Look at William Ruto. He had all the chips with him. That's how he was able to bag Mudavadi and uh, Wetangula. He told them, I'm giving you 30% of government. Rayla Odinga does not have that 30% to give. The president already has taken a chunk of that uh, coalition. So he could not offer uh, Mudavadi and Wetangula anything substantial. He could not offer Mutua anything substantial, and that is why they left. Mutua is a Baba diehard, was anyway, but he saw his party is getting nothing, nothing meaningful. But on the other side, he got an offer, same thing with Kingi. So the president took all of Rayla Odinga's, not all, but a majority of his bargaining chips. The Rayla Odinga ought to, be, ought to have been able to counter William Ruto's offer. If Ruto is telling Mudavadi, I'll give you 10% of government, Trailer should say that's nothing, I'll give you 15. You know, that kind of math at the end of the day would have given Trailer the presidency. If Wetangula was promised this same kind of uh, percentage that he was given by Ruto, Trailer would be the president. Wetangula delivered Bungoma, Transoia around 40% and above. Had he been in Raila Odinga's ranks, he would be president. So you see, these leaders, who people do not think are quite influential, when you put two and two together, you find that, oh, they could have actually gotten candidate X over the finish line. So in all fairness to Raila Odinga, in my opinion, I personally do not feel that he has lost the election. I feel that it is President Uru Mugai Kenyatta who has lost this election because he's the chairman of Azimio he is behind most of these decisions. The picking of Martha Karua was hinted by Rigadi Gashago in the debate that that was the president's hand. And also by taking some of the bargaining chips and, you know, all this put together really frustrated Ray Laudinga in regards to the tally of his numbers. In my opinion, if President Uru Kenyatta was to give Ray Laudinga a fair shot, he needed to have done three things. Only three things. The first is to give Raila Odinga the freedom to pick any candidate he wants. Now I know they did a, a whole, what do you call it, interview and everything. It was uh, grandiose. You'd see the leaders arriving and be, there was a panel and all that. But you and I both know that the upper echelon, the guys at the helm of power, get the final say. They really do. And it looks like they went for Martha Karua. If, if the picking of Martha Karua was Raila Odinga's choice, then the burden of failure falls on him. But in my opinion, all indications show that this could have been President Uru Kenyatta. The second thing that the president ought to have done to give Raila Odinga a winning chance was to stay out of the presidential race completely. The president should never have attacked William Ruto, except through his proxies. He can send C.S. Matiangi, he can send so on and so forth, but he himself should never ever have done it. And he should never have also gone out to campaign for Raila Odinga. Now why is this the case? Remember, Jubilee, the outgoing party, the outgoing ruling party, has its own lists of failures. The high cost of fuel, the high cost of unga, the high cost of milk, everything is just terrible as far as uh, the economy of the country is concerned. So, so it was not in any way beneficial for Jubilee Party to align itself with Azimio and then to have a stake in that government. So the citizens were seeing that, hey, this party, Imetutesa, and we wanted to go home, and here they are supporting this candidate and they ought to extend their tenure. You know, we're not going to have that. That was the kind of talk that was going on around so the president should have kept off not entirely this is politics he can keep off publicly but use the system behind the scenes like Moi Kibaki did Moi Kibaki did not ever campaign for anybody I don't think I saw that but the system was very much aligned behind President Uru Kenyatta and this allowed the people to treat Uru Kenyatta as his own man like he's standing for himself back in 2013, that is, because 
he was not an extension or he did not appear to be an extension of Kibaki's regime. This was a whole new set of people coming in as far as the public could could, could perceive. And that is the kind of perception Ray Lodinga ought to have had and that is the kind of perception that he deserves or deserved for that matter because it's a gone case now. And the third thing that the president should have done was not publicizing the fact that some of his cabinet secretaries will continue in power. So these are some of the things which have cost Ray Laudinga. Ray Laudinga ought to have won the presidency by retaining Mudavadi, retaining Wetangula, and he can only do that by having all the bargaining chips, which in the first place have been shipped off to President Urumigai Kenyatta. So he was dealt bad cards, in my opinion, but I personally believe Ray Laudinga has not lost this election. It is the sitting president, the chairman of Azimio, who has lost this election. Relo Dinga can walk with his held with his head held up high because he did not orchestrate all these scenarios which led to the loss of the election, in my opinion. But that's just my thoughts. I'd really love to know what you all have to say about this. So just comment below, let me know what you think. Here's the thing, I don't always believe that I have all the facts. I have some facts, but even you do have something to say about this, and I'd really love to hear what you have to say. So just comment below. Um and also as I close this video, just Take a moment or two, subscribe to this channel at David Ofula on YouTube. If you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube and search for David Ofula. I'll be the first person to pop up. And you can hit subscribe there, hit the notification icon. And I'll be doing more videos like this. So thank you so much, guys. Do have yourselves a great day. I'm hoping it's sunny where you're at because it's <laughs> out here it's super cold. But all in all, we are happy with the state of the country. No violence, no nothing. You can... Take a walk outside. That's how it should be and I'm hoping it holds that way. Adios.